A little while ago, I made a video on the YouTuber Plague Moth, the self-titled Gore God and Hurter of Feelings, a person who makes videos on disturbing subjects and is an all-around pain to deal with. So much has happened that we're making this video, which will serve as a more light-hearted companion piece delving into the many controversies of Plague Moth, YouTube's most self-destructive creator. Hey, it's me, Plague Moth, the guy who just sells gore to kids outside! The uncensored stuff went away as it became problematic. He'll put up his defensive shields, like using his gender identity, or his family, or all of his stalkers, or what have you. I really hope that he loses his Patreon. I hope he loses his monetization. I, I really hope that someone or something happens to where he has to actually face some struggles in his life. He, he's some fucking neckbeard with no money himself. I'm not gonna fucking- what am I gonna get? His goddamn shoes? Oh my god, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know if I'm gonna be, be able to pay my bills or eat this week. For those of you that didn't see my original video, let me fill you in. We have already covered how the content Moth makes is incredibly insensitive, as well as the fact that he had gone out of his way to assassinate the character off and falsely accuse his detractors. This is often done by either calling and associating them with paedophiles, or just projecting and calling these people false accusers themselves. I inevitably ended up blocking him after some time, and basically just trying to explain myself as he took out of context screenshot out of on out of context screenshot out of a discord and really just tried to make a mess of things and smear me as a pedophile this was at the time mostly directed at the youtuber that creepy reading get out of my replies you shoulder loving pedo apologist at that creepy reading honestly you harbor the hurtcore compilation producer you deserve the worst you sick fuck I mean, I don't think half of that's true and knowing Plague Moth we're not gonna see any evidence for it so it's like why take the sky face value? When Creepy himself had decided to report Moth's Patreon after being autoplayed into the video 99 Stomps, a video Moth was selling of a 15 year old being murdered. This resulted in Moth losing his Patreon. Considering that he'd been warned before for selling the exact same videos, this was the final strike. Instead of just owning up to this brutal fact, Moth went insane and started to just deny that it ever existed, deleting rooms and hiding evidence. Moth even pedo jacketed TCR, saying that he got all of his screenshots from Kiwi Farms and that he had never even joined or paid for the server despite him literally having received. Never forget you had children watching and reading porn and having voice chat sex with Ripper. I'll post those screens after you drop your video, you gerbil fucker. Moth would continue with these attacks for a while, but it eventually calmed down only for Moth to restart the toxic gossip train by making a second video on Creepy, calling him among other things an abuser and a pedophile who hides behind their autism to get out of criticism. In a chill stream Moth deleted or privated right after, the ghoul even went as low as suggesting that TCR used uses his sexuality to get people to lower their guard around him. Well, TCR says that he's asexual, but he would have sex with somebody for them, which literally just translates to, uh, well, I'm the nice guy. You don't have to worry about me approaching you sexually, but... This is where I decided to release my video, for upon releasing it, was already outdated due to Muff continuing to shoot himself in the foot with more and more drama. You can already tell how much we're going to have to go through today. So let's just see what people have to think about the video, shall we? So I'll be looking at some of the comments that were left by what I assume to be defenders of Plague Moth. Most of these I've already responded to in the comments, but I'll show them anyway. The most frequent ones that I got were asking, why did Moth get banned? This was because of a series of copyright strikes that he had taken against him. It's unknown if these strikes will be held up or not. Even so, he continued to risk everything as he started streaming videos on his second channel while re-uploading the same drama and TCR and Slime Beast on Andreas. If TCR was trying to hide those videos, it's clear that he's not doing a good job of it. The leaving the LGBT video was him saying that he doesn't support the LGBT because he is in the LGBT. I've never made a point against or about this video in mine, nor do I care enough to. I've not even watched the video and before you start to say that I'm jumping to accuse Moth of being homophobic then just calm down for a second. This video was put into the video because I had seen the thumbnail and some of us and I thought that it was quite funny so we decided to put it there. Nowhere in my video did I actually make a point or an example of this video. Even so, why can't you support the LGBT as a part of the LGBT? It's clear that the video was made for clickbait designed to make people confused and angry. It's ragebait but it's funny rage about. Moff is trying to bring awareness to these videos and show respect to the victims. 
That might be true for some videos, however, the ones he was directly selling were not true. During the Funky Town video, Uncensored, he's laughing during one of the worst cartel videos ever made. On Twitter, he's literally asking for funny gore compilations. Even if some of his videos are respectful, that's not true for the significant portion of them. I think the only people that actually believe that what Moff is doing is actually respectful are socially inept. The type of individual who thinks posting gore to get a jab at random people is funny- uh oh wait. If you read Moss' Twitter before it was nuked, you'd know that he has a complete lack of care for the victims. No sane person would say this about Junko. No, I'm sorry, Cox. My voice is fucked, but I'll try my best. Junko, future of can't box for shit. How can she handle blows to the stomach, but Goku easily stopped cool as punch? So apparently this is like a little girl that played Moss making fun of who was, who was tortured and killed. It grown, grown adult with a kid that like, making fun of a dead person with fucking anime gifts. That's so embarrassing. Uh, fuck, get a fucking job, man. It's clear that Moth doesn't actually care about the victims he makes videos on. Let me just show you a clip from one of Moth's videos where he reacts to an innocent person unfortunately dying. Oh, oh, fuck. This is way higher quality, dude. Damn. This guy's still going. Yep, thanks for your input, mate. I know this isn't Moff saying it himself, but one of his fans left a lengthy response to my video in the comment section. One of these responses said how these were all accidents that could be proven if said people went by the rules and weren't doing something stupid. If you have to excuse someone's exploitation of the dead by saying how it's essentially the victim's fault that they were turned into a gore video, then you aren't painting a very convincing argument. Also, most of what Moff covers are murders and gang executions, not accidents. Moff also likes to say shit like this, so what this fan's saying isn't actually that far from Moff's own self-entitlement. Even if you believe Moff is respectful, you have to concede that there are valid reasons why many people don't think he's respectful, or how on the outside looking in, it looks like he's being downright disrespectful. Now everyone can rationalise that they die for every penny, as an acceptable way to talk about the victims of murders and executions. Now that we've gotten all those responses out of the way, let's get into what Moff actually had to say about it. If you were thinking that Moss' response would be a well thought out and genuine cover of everything I had to say and what anyone had to say, then you will unfortunately be surprised that all he had to say about me was to slander me as a gross racist and that I had my Twitter taken down for doxing and harassment. I won't be participating because no clown for clowns. I've gotten his Twitter's nuked about five times for violent sexual threats and racism specifically against black folks. Getting tired of my harassment by these nobodies being highlighted especially with no substance. This was said multiple times on a stream that Turkey Tom had made about situation where he includes my problems with mom he posted my docs on a few of them including one with my uh legal name stan was one of his alts and then that, i'm not talking about my first name being my docs i'm talking about like addresses and things like that would be reposted you know part of me doesn't think that he actually responded but if you've been with the drama you would know that's not how moth likes to cover things about him so it's what i expected just like turkey tom i too am a gross racist except i don't even get the luxury of having a post of mine taken out of context sure tom did something cringe what five years ago just like how tcr is transphobic because he thought moff's skit of him wearing a dress was goofy and how lazy protects predators because she watched a video about ripper point is if you believe moff then these words racist pedo and transphobe basically have no meaning and can be applied to anyone you don't like the only reason he thinks i'm a racist is not only because he's delusional but it's because he has a collection of edgy tweets that if you look at them are clearly a fucking joke i find it funny that moff is literally allowed to joke about the victims of horrific tragedies and anyone who could potentially benefit him are given the green light to make off-color joke while I say something stupid on Twitter and now that's clear proof of genuine racist belief. It's only okay when their favorites do it. FYI, these turds are friends with a racist troll who doxes people. LOL. Dude, this guy's the type of guy that fucking record a car crash just for his fucking YouTube video. I keep driving, you black spear chuck on piece of shit! I know Moff has some problems with perspective. He's not really a commentary guy, even if he labels himself as one, but you would think that a dude who watches gore videos to an audience of 400,000 could figure out the intent of dark humor. It's almost like he's misrepresenting the situation to make it easier to dismiss any criticisms. Moff having a problem with criticism, I don't see how that could segue. I want to return to the accusation that Moff has accidentally watched child sexual abuse material, as these claims seem to cause a lot of confusion. This is due in part to both Moff's accusers and Moff himself intentionally or unintentionally muddying the waters. Of course, debunking all the myths that go along with Daisy's destruction, which 
No, again, I'm just going to clarify that we are not going to view that. I have not viewed it. We're not going to download it. I don't know where to do that, and I don't want to do that, and I have not and will not do that. So I've put together this little section to make these allegations as easy to follow as possible. I do need to preface that this section will mention brief descriptions of CSA. If you're sensitive to mentions of CSA M Orange, not in the right headspace to hear about these topics, please skip to the timestamp on the screen. I also want to preface that these are allegations and should be treated as such. I'll just lay out the available evidence and let you, the audience, draw your own conclusions, if any. This is not about cancelling someone, this is about getting an honest answer for why Moff's infamous 4 video looks the way it does. Peter Scully is a 6 year old ex-con man turned violent child sex offender who gained a reputation for himself online by producing disgusting violent child sexual abuse movies under his website No Limits Fun. The contents of these videos were so disturbing that the years prior to his arrest they were considered by many to be a deep web urban legend. Unfortunately, these movies were very much real, the most well known of these abuse videos being titled Daisy's Destruction in which it documents the torture and rape of three girls by Scully and two Filipino women. No words can even begin to describe how evil this man is, which is why Moss' fixation on the topic sparked concern among some audience members. Not only would he use footage of Scully in random videos that had nothing to do with Daisy's, but Daisy's destruction and Peter Scully essentially became part of his channel branding, with cases being mentioned multiple times in passing, a Patreon exclusive video being made, and having Peter Scully's likeness appearing in his fucking video intros. People have commented on this weird obsession usually to be met with mockery. Moff has this habit of just attacking anyone who has slight criticism, which is why you see the post like we showed before. Now, don't take that as me saying that Moff sympathises with Peter Scully or has any form of connection to him, but it's incredibly weird that a guy who's admitted to accidentally watching one of the most disgusting videos on the internet has also made multiple videos on the same guy and topic. Like, what new is there to talk about? If he's correcting mistakes made in the past, then he messed up the details of something this horrifying? Going back to the topic of videos, this would be further put into question by a person only known as Slime Beast is a creepy pasta creator who has been incredibly involved with Moth due to his criticism of Moth's usage of Daisy's destruction for content. This first stemmed from Slime making a video on Moth, where he questions where Moth had gotten the footage for his infamous 4 video. The specific part called into question was how Moff could allegedly have had the uncensored trailer for Daisy's destruction. Now, this is where things get tricky because no, Moff did not have the trailer. He actually got it from a YouTube clip from the show 60 Minutes, but when he showed this, he linked the wrong video, so it did look weird to some people. But let me just state this again so that Moff can't say that I'm accusing him of things. He did not have the trailer for Daisy's destruction. But what is weird is the fact that there are differences between the clips that Moff uses in his trailer versus the 60 Minutes trailer. Most notably, the blurring on specific parts. Take for example here where in the 60 minutes trailer something has clearly been blurred but Moff's screenshot doesn't have that. This would cause reasonable concern, right? Well, Moff didn't think so as he decided to go on his platforms to completely misconstrue what Slime Beast claims actually were. Somehow, despite the audio literally never being mentioned, he thought it was an intelligent move to epically debunk the claims that the scream sound effects were stock, which, yeah, no shit, they were terrible stock sound effects, literally no one was arguing this. <laughs> What the actual fuck? <laughs> Why Moth thought it was a great editorial decision to add Audio Jungle scream sound effects over censored child porn, we'll never know. But this is how Moth argues. He will never tackle the claim head on, but instead move the goalpost to make it appear as the argument's been debunked. When this flawless debater trick fails, he is sure to fall back on his old reliable. Oh, he detracts as a pedophile. Is. She is very clearly a fucking minor. At the time when you favorited the other images, this girl was 15 years old. You were 26 years old, Christopher. Why were you saving those images? No, not until I'm ready. Christopher, why were you saving images of a 15-year-old girl? What were these posts, you may ask? Yeah, I hope I'm not the only one who doesn't think that these even remotely look like a child. It's no surprise that Moffat completely interpret what these images actually are. I guess the amount of gore of children he's seen has messed with his mind so much that he can only see CP and gore from now on. This all culminated with the majority of viewers seeing Moff as a person who would go to Slime Beast almost every day to call him some of the most disgusting shit. But if calling your critics pedophiles won't work, then Moff has something else up his sleeve. If all else fails, Moff's final plan to shut up critics is to just take their platform. Moff has a repeat pattern of trying to remove his detractors by any means necessary, myself included. Ever wonder why it seems like every few weeks I announce a new Twitter account? Long story short, Moff and his wife Andrea stalk my tweets, screenshotting them literally minutes after they've been posted, report me, and then brag when my accounts are inevitably shut down. It's ironic how Moff constantly talks down to critics when they are all bit of nobodies, but has spent months trying to shut me up. Recently, as of writing this script, Moff has upped his silencing tactics against me by outright calling me a doxer and a harasser. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Let's see what recipes Moff has. 
Oh, it's the exact same edgy jokes he called me out for months ago. Oh, look, he's responding to people asking for evidence. Let's see what I asked to say. He's calling them orbiters. Fan replies and saying that they aren't worth his time. Fantastic. To conclude, Moff has proven without a shadow of a doubt that I'm a serial doxer. Even if this whole video didn't sway you to believe Moff is a malicious actor, this point likely will. On July 28th, Moff filed a DMCA complaint against my previous video on him. Anyone who has seen my video, even if you disagree with my arguments, could easily determine that it's cut and dry fair use. So obviously fair use that YouTube, who isn't usually known for making good decisions, sided with me and didn't even bother to remove the video. Hello, thank you for your message. However, we remain concerned that your copyright notification is not valid for some or all the videos identified in your notification. As a result, the content will remain live on YouTube. Sincerely, the YouTube team. This DMCA is, odd to say the least, and legally dubious. For starters, the biggest glaring discrepancy is the lack of phone number or address. This information is incredibly fucking important to put on a legal document if the matter ever gets escalated to court, which it probably won't, but... Redacting information like this would legally likely be considered perjury as a DMCA form is a legal document even if filed online. Also, what is the point of mentioning slander and harassment? This is a copyright issue, not your fucking Discord chats. Finally, this might have been Moff's biggest slip up. I swear under penalty of perjury that I have good faith belief the material should be removed due to falsely using my story without permission. My story? Now correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think one girl 99 stomps counting with Moff is a work of peak literary fiction. Personally, waking up to that DMCA didn't really scare me as I already kinda knew that he'd fuck it up in some way. Just goes to show that even a 400k plus channel can't even use the system that was given and trusted to him. And people ask why the copyright system is off and My personal experiences with Moff's side, I'm genuinely lucky not to have had my channel taken down. Can't say the same for him though, seeing as his was taken down just a week or two after my first video came out. I find it funny that for a guy who always shouts and brags about being the most disturbing channel on YouTube, he seems to get really pissy when he show off the disturbing things that he genuinely does, to the point where he has to try and take your videos and potentially your channels down. Keep in mind, this is a repeat behaviour and he's most likely going to do it again to some smaller YouTuber who might be too intimidated to even speak out about it. This is the level of pettiness that we're actually dealing with here. A guy who can't even let people make fucking videos about him, but he's allowed to watch dead babies get fucking stomped and eaten to death? I'm genuinely baffled as to how this man got his channel back. Something like this was bound to happen, and I'm genuinely surprised that Moff didn't pull the homophobia card when YouTube, probably because he knows that it wouldn't end well for any of his channels. But I think this is where I should close off this video with a nice little conclusion, a moral to this YouTuber horror story. I think by now I've already gotten the point across that I don't really like Moff. It's insane to me that someone like him can be allowed into the YouTube space and just lie about anyone and everyone that he mildly dislikes. Hopefully this will conclude the Plague Moff arc of my channel and I continue to make videos on people that will hopefully not call me a racist and a doctor. Recently Moff has announced that he would be ceasing all talk publicly about TCR and Slime Beast. I guess that counts as a win for us but we'll never get an apology or anything close to that so I don't buy it. The reason for this being that Turkey Tom had actually covered the Moff situation on the live stream, even weighing in on my situation which I really appreciate. On this stream though, Moff was told that it would probably be best to let the drama die, and because a famous YouTuber said it, then he obliged. In So we got a nice glaze of grease running along the lines here and here, very cute double chin, unwashed shirt, got the shadow of Shrek here on the wall.